Disciples of the fluffy slipper, what you were looking at is the Bitcoin chart, the linear chart for Bitcoin, 2010, 2011. Bitcoin did a 20,000 X and then it dropped all the way down minus 93%. Everybody said it was a scam. Wired made articles about it saying Bitcoin is a cult of a weirdo on the internet named Satoshi who won't even show his face, an unknown entity. They also said that no people's currency has ever worked in the history of mankind and everybody's an idiot. At the top here, Richard Hart and Da Vinci J15, two influential crypto people bought it right up there and they had to sit through annihilation. And lucky for them, I mean, it came back. I want you to know that in the beginning days of Bitcoin, there were libertarians, people who believed in freedom of speech, freedom of movement. They didn't want the government to oppress. The government has a role in society. Yes, it does. But it's not meant to squash on the necks of citizens. Today, unfortunately, the Bitcoin maxis and Ethereum maxis are singing a different tune. Let's start with the Bitcoin maxis. The Bitcoin maxis used to fight for liberty and freedom. The original cypherpunks, they wanted to use technology to liberate mankind. Do you want to know who said that? Maybe you've heard of a gentleman named Satoshi Nakamoto. He said that. It was how finny. They want to use technology to help mankind instead of squash them. Today, Bitcoin Maxis, unfortunately, they sing a different tune. They have a temple now, the Bitcoin temple. It's pretty big, 580, almost 600 billion market cap. The Bitcoin temple relies on people coming in to buy the Ponzi coin. Obviously, chung in cheek, friends, it's not a Ponzi. But in crypto and life, everything's a Ponzi. If the world stops spinning tomorrow, it's over. If people stop coming in tomorrow, most things go to zero. We need more people to come in. Bitcoin Max is understand it. Everybody understands it. Why is Bitcoin any different than anything else? It's not. It's just that now Bitcoin is a mature part of its life. It requires more money to keep it going up. It requires solidified belief. Just like when you bet on the S&P 500, you need to believe in the America. You need to literally believe in the American dream. There's no ifs or buts about it. Now the Bitcoin Maxis, yes, they're singing a different tune. They will submit themselves to the securities exchange clowns. Yes, they are clowns. Puppet wing arm for the US Fed. Get this clown out of office. I am fully aware. When the clowns in charge, the deep state, when they replace Gary Guzler, the semen demon, they're going to put another clown eventually but the new clown that they put in is going to be soft and he or she will be very kind to crypto and that's what we want we want to punish bad behavior reward good behavior so this is in a nutshell i made this little meme this is literally it bitcoin maxis they know they can't win against Ethereum, smart contracts, and other crypto altcoins because they are fulfilling a part of demand that humans want on the crypto blockchain. They don't want to change Bitcoin. They can't change it. It has its own part of the market. And I'm not telling them to. They shouldn't. Just stay there. Stay pet rock. We need a very stable base layer zero for the internet. We do need that. Internet, the people's money. This is it. Gary, please tell them they're all securities. That's their strategy. Their strategy is to submit themselves into the buttocks of the clowns. The clowns, is, bums are smelly enough. Now you want to go for a clown bum. And they're begging for them. They're begging for them. They go, oh, please go ban them. Go ban them everywhere. This is a joke. What they don't know is they're losing the spirit of the people. They think what they're doing is winning, but they're not. The Bitcoin of today is not Bitcoin of $10 land. It's not Bitcoin of $400 land. It's not even Bitcoin of $5,000 land, okay? The Bitcoin of today is a different story, friends. The Bitcoin of today already had Elon Musk shill it to the world. It already had Michael Saylor call it a cybernetic hornet's nest and try to shill it and get countries in. It's becoming more, more mature. It's part of this life phase of the cycle. But, big, fat, juicy, smelly butt, don't for a second think your shitty little 30 grand clip is going to get you retirement in crypto if you are 100% allocated to Bitcoin. You're not getting it. I hope you do, 
but chances aren't that good. We got BlackBerry coming in, and they've got one agenda, and the agenda is to take everybody's power. But to take everybody's power first, they've got to convince everybody that they're going to get some power in the future, and when it gets to about one-tenth of the way where they think it's going, see you later. Just prepare for this scenario. I don't want this scenario to happen. For any reminder, this scenario is a 70% chance for me. There is still a 30% scenario where we all ride a unicorn, eat jelly beans, and we ride off into the sunset. 30% scenario that we break 120K for Bitcoin, Ethereum goes to 15 to 20K, and we all sing hallelujah. In a nutshell, Bitcoin's liquidity is too thick. It requires billions of dollars to move it up. Billions of dollars. You can't affect change anymore. If you go and make a new Bitcoin channel, welcome, you're one of the next 300,000 already out there. You can't do anything. That's why Bitcoin Maxis, what they have to do is they have to go to other countries. That's why, for example, Max Kaiser had to go and meet with El Salvador. They're actually going to meet other countries. It's the next level of shill. It's like Sergei Nazarov going into the White House. It's like Richard Hart going to and meeting, meeting the president of another country. It's that type of level of shilling. Max Kaiser, he's representing Bitcoin. This is how crypto is going to go in the future. I know it sounds crazy. You're trying to onboard countries. That's the, that's the big game. Because countries cozy up to you. They have access to their treasury. They can allow their citizens to DCA buy your coin. This is the ultimate goal. That's why when you're late in the game... You can't get retailers in to affect the price anymore. Thousands of dollars aren't, isn't going to move it. You literally start to need millions and millions and millions upon millions, otherwise known as billions. BlackRock has $9 trillion in. That's the level of shilling that you'd require to start moving the bags. That's why they were cozy up to the government to try ban all the competition. They crowd out Ethereum. And we move on to Ethereum now. So the Bitcoin maxis will crowd out Ethereum. But Ethereum maxis, unfortunately, have their same biases too. I have no hatred for anybody, friends. Just straight love, friendship, kindness. I'm just telling you, it's a game. Everybody's playing the game. Part of the game is to be in the cult. The stronger the cult, the better their character is. And the, the aim of their characters is to never let you know they are playing the game. That's what they're here for. They say, no, it's not a game. We're here for the tech. No, it's not a game. We're here to decentralize stuff. We're here for immutability. Uh, we're here to make the free the world. BS. They're here for number go up. They're here to add value. But if they told you that, you wouldn't be as excited because other people can compete with that marketing, marketing talking point and say that, oh, we're here to make value too. We're here for price pump. Okay. Remember from Metcalf saw friends, just like E equals MC squared, Energy is equal to MC squared, right? It's equal to it. It can transfer left and right. We have, in Metcalfe's law, okay, the price is equal to N squared of the users. So if you 10X the user base, you're going to get 100X of the price. It's the same thing. The price going up parabolic means people are coming in. The price going down exponentially is the people leaving. They're the same thing. Don't forget this. So when people say, I want to add value, I want to gain adoption, that's what they're doing. We're, we're, the price is going up. We're describing the same thing. So I have to use this example here, right? Fierce defenders of the Ethereum land, the Ethereum tribe, Bankless, okay? I love watching the show Bankless. I know many of you will be shocked. But yeah, I love watching it. I watch everybody, friends. I learn from everybody. Everybody's got good sides. Everybody's got a bias. You've got to figure it out. Bankless are discussing... Curve founder. Curve is a stablecoin DEX on Ethereum. Enormous. Billions and billions of dollars locked up. He was caught. Yes, caught in capital letters. Caught red hand dumping 48% of the entire Curve supply on Aave, the money lending protocol. He literally risked the whole ecosystem. He dumped it to go buy mansions. These are the mansions, okay? 40 to $100 million. They went to go buy mansions. This $40 million is US. The, who cares what the number is? It's an insane amount of money. They risk the whole DeFi ecosystem to go buy this lavish lifestyle. Why do you need a house this big 
when your coin's down 95%. Tell me that. Here you go. Why the hell do you need a house that big when your coin is down minus 98%? Yes, you're going to say, oh, it's hyperinflationary here. I don't care. The chart is painted down. You're a doo-doo head. Why do you need a house that big? Why do you need a risk every single investor's value for a house that big? There are so many bathrooms. How, many, how much drugs do you do that you need to do that many bathrooms all around your home? Do you even have time to go swimming? And so when we're presented with this lavish lifestyle, this absolute abomination, this is the antithesis of DeFi. This is not decentralized. This is 48 ownership on one person. And then Devil's Advocate says, well, if I go to every other protocol, many other coins own 80 to 90% of the coins. Okay, yeah, here's the thing. But were they dumping on everyone? Did they get caught dumping on everyone? No, they didn't. So here we go. I'm shining the light. I'm shining the light. What did our friends at Bankless say about them? Okay, this was reported by Mr. Ali Kane. They said, let's give him the benefit of doubt. This poor guy, maybe something's going on with his life. Oh, this poor guy. You know, he woke up one day. He said, oh, I just need a 60 to $100 million mansion. Let's risk the whole of DeFi ecosystem, baby dolls. That's a great idea. And then comes, literally within the same show, the next segment. The next segment goes straight about Richard Hart in the same episode. I watched this episode. And when it comes to Richard Hart, what did they say? By the way, False accusations by the SEC clowns. No fraud. No proof of fraud. The Treasury still has $620 million still sitting on the chain, unspent, in DAI, the stablecoin. All of it. Just to let you know as well, Richard mined Bitcoin when it was 50 Bitcoin per block. And who the hell cares? What do they say about him? They said, that hex is a stupid meme token. Put Richard Hart in jail, man. That's what they said. Funny the hypocrisy. Okay. And when you want, friends, you should really watch this little clip from, from Sir Ali Kane. Today, I just want to share two clips from the Bankless podcast in the last week. I'll put it in the description. And I even mentioned here, right? Let's be honest. If Richard Hart dumped that many coins in Aave to buy... $100 million mansion, these bankless guys would demand jail. They would be screaming at the top of their lungs. They would be squealing so hard. Send him in jail. They'd probably file the applications themselves. And I even have that tweet here for you. All the information collected from Sir Mr. Dipcatcher to show you, okay? On chain, $618 million, the exact number he untouched. All of it untouched. 200,000 Hex, Pulse Chain, and PulseX community members telling you nothing's been dumped. Where is the evidence? Send us the transaction has. Show me where you see this $613 million, 18, whatever it is. Show me how it's going to disappear on your end. I want to see that. How come you can't see this number, but I can? How come 200,000 of us can observe this number on chain and we can verify it on chain, on Etherscan and any other website? We can see the money sitting there. Yet for some reason, you turn a blind eye to that. And instead, you want to tell me, oh, this other guy, you know what? Let's give him the benefit of the doubt, you know? So why does this actually happen, friends? Why? Why? Let's finish it off with some truth. The truth is that, I love you and you're my friend. Also, the truth is that during this time, what made Ethereum take off from the depths of bear market hell? I'm going to show you right now. This is what the Ethereum chart really looked like. Okay. This is a linear chart. Ethereum was down minus 94.5% here and it was building DeFi. And we all knew something was coming. The Ethereum maxis knew something was coming. They wrote about DeFi, stablecoins, perps, perps, DEXs, Uniswap, all these. The price was nowhere near what it is today. All it could do was go to $350. Don't forget, the top was $1,400. A long way down. Like, this was the most it could do. Okay, you're down 80%. Then all these protocols like Curve, 
Uniswap, Synthetics, Chaining, all these ecosystems started flourishing. You also had Andre Cronier with the Yearn Protocol, Wi-Fi, calling him the king of DeFi, right before the grand rugs. All of these added network effects. They all added network effects to Ethereum. That's what happened. Because they added network effects, they added adoption. Because they brought in more entrepreneurs, because they were making more protocols, more websites, and they were all on the Ethereum city, they all turned the blind eye to any wrongdoing they did. So that's where it all comes from. You want to know why are they nice to one person and why aren't they nice to the other? It all comes down to this. These protocols brought people and they've stayed on Ethereum. They've effectively stayed in the city, latched themselves in, said, we are Ethereum, we support Ethereum, we want all the big whales to come in, we want all the volume to come in, and that's why it's most important. If you read between the lines, what I'm effectively getting you to understand is that they are here for the price go up. They're not actually all here for the tech, even though they say they are. We can infer it by now because this person just did something bad, but they turned a blind eye because them adding network effects to Ethereum wiped their hands clean. So don't forget, friends, it's a game of politics. It's we're dealing with money, financial entertainment, the casino, the Ponzi. We're dealing with all of it. That's why I'm here as your vessel. Like, subscribe, bell button, and all. Please tell mom and dad. We're not going to be biased. We're going to check our own biases, okay? Because life is full of surprises. We're not going to judge other people. We're going to give everyone a fair go. Like, subscribe, bell button. Catch you in the next one.